Okay, it's setting up. Need uh, about 10 seconds to set up. Okay. Okay, now we are on YouTube, live streaming okay. now. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me start with a brief introduction of our speaker today. So today we were um, we, we are very happy to uh, have the opportunity to to invite Dr. Li Chen and to give a presentation. Uh, so uh, Dr. Li Chen is a full professor at Xi'an Jiao Tong University, China. He uh, obtained his PhD in engineering thermal physics at Xi'an Jiao Tong University in uh, uh, two thousand and thirteen, and then he. Uh, uh, was a director postal at the North Anonymous National Lab for about two years. So Dr. Chen was the winner of Young Scientist Award of Asian Union of Thermal Science and Engineering. Uh, his research focused on uh, transport phenomenon in power media with background of uh, fuel cell, flu, battery, carbon dioxide storage and uh, uh, hydrocarbon resource explanation. And uh, particularly, he has developed an advanced uh, pore, pore scale model based on lattice Boltzmann method for coupled multi-phase flow, heat and mass transfer, uh, chemical reaction, a solid and um, precipitation dissolution process in pulse media. So Dr. Chen has published more than 100 journal, journal papers uh, in top journals. And uh, his research also um, needs to over a 40 conference presentation uh, and also 10 patents and eight software cop copyrights. So he served in several um, journal for the uh, editorial uh, edit editorial board, um, including the frontier in heat and mass transfer and, and energies. He also is the young uh, editor board of uh, the advance in applied energy and the, the associate editor of frontier uh, in thermal engineering. And uh, today uh, we were ha very happy to have this opportunity and to have Dr. Chen to, to introduce his recent uh, work. And Dr. Chen, okay. please start the presentation. Okay, thanks, thanks Professor Lee for your, for, your, for your introduction and thanks for your invitation uh, for me uh, to give me an opportunity to, uh, to introduce our uh, uh, work about uh, post scale modeling of transport process in post media. And uh, <clears throat> and the content of my talk today, uh, including uh, include uh, five parts. And the first is the introduction to the pros media, and uh, and the post scale modeling method. And then uh, from uh, uh, the second part to the uh, fourth part, I will talk about uh, the application of our post scale model to the transport phenomena in fuel cells, in carbon dioxide sequestration, and the, uh, the topology optimization. And finally, I want to make some conclusions. So first, I want to uh, uh, briefly introduce uh, for those people without background of, of, of pros media. I want to briefly introduce pros media. So actually, pros media is a material that contains plenty of pros or voids between solid skeleton. For example, this is a two D sch schematic of a pros media. You can find the, the solid part and the fluid part. Okay, so this is actually an X-ray image of uh, the gas diffusion layer uh, electrodes in, 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 in fuel cells. So you can uh, observe the, the solid parts and the pores between the solid parts, right? And finally, this is actually an X-ray image of the pulse lock. And you also can, can, can find the blue part, actually the solid part. And between the blue solid parts actually are the Pause, uh, pause, and you can find that the fluid flow, uh, the fluid can flow inside the pause, right? So this is a, a brief introduction of the pulse media. So actually, the study of transport process in pulse media uh, can be traced back to uh, uh, can be traced back to uh, eighteen fifty six by Henry Darcy, and uh, and Henry Darcy at that, at that time uh, he uh, conducted the following experiment. So he applied a pressure drop 
between the inlet and the outlet of a pulse media. And uh, he measured the flow rate. And, uh, and he finds that uh, uh, the, the velocity obtained uh, or from the, through the pulse media is linearly proportional uh, to the uh, pressure gradient applied. And thus he proposed the very famous uh, equation uh, used to describe the, uh, the fluid flow in a pulse media. So this is a Dash equation he proposed. So you can find that, so you can find uh, here is a velocity, the average velocity in the pulse media. And the delta P is a gradient, pressure gradient. And the, uh, and the mu here is a dynamic viscosity. And you can find that the velocity is proportional, is linearly proportional to the pressure gradient. And here, uh, Dasi uh, <coughs> proposed uh, 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 a, a variable called uh, permeability. And uh, you can find uh, from this equation that the unit of permeability actually is m square. And uh, it, it is used to describe the, cap uh, the capacity of pulse media for fluid flow. So the higher the the, the value of k or the permeability, the higher, the stronger capacity for the pulse media of the pulse media for fluid flow. So you can find that. So actually, that equation establishes the relationship between the pressure gradient and the velocity we can obtain. Or we can we can get okay. So so uh, so uh, after the work of Dasi, actually people uh, researchers uh, routinely. Uh, 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 describe uh, the transport process in pulse, pulse media uh, yeah, based on the uh, IUA scale, that is the relative element volume scale. So let me, uh, the, basic idea, the basic idea of this, of such IUA scale simulation is that uh, we use an effective transport property to describe the capacity of a pulse media for a certain transport process. For example, we use the permeability as we just uh, just discussed for the fluid flow to and uh, for, for the velocity. And we also use the effective semiconductivity for temperature or for the heat transfer. And we use the effective diffusivity for the mass transfer or to describe the concentration field. We use effective conductivity for the iron conduction and to obtain the potential field. And we, for, and we also, for the multiphase flow, we also use the relative permeability. Uh, to describe the multiphase flow of, uh, and to determine the saturation distribution. And you can find that in such, at such uh, by using such IV scale modeling, we, we do not need to describe the details of the pulse structures because you can find that the, actually the structure of the pulse media are very complex. But based on such IV scale um, model, you do not need to uh, describe or, con or consider the details of the pulse media structures. We just need to uh, simulate it, it at the IV scale. But we know that actually the transport processes uh, inside the pulse media uh, actually take place at the pulse scale. And, uh, uh, and the usually the interaction between the structures and the transport process is very important. And it, uh, such, uh, such uh, uh, we need to understand such interactions as to uh, better uh, control the process in a pulse media and to and, and for better design of the post media. But you can find that at the IV scale or the DASI scale, we do not consider the details of the post structures. And thus, we turn to another uh, modeling method that is a post scale modeling method. In such a post scale modeling method, we directly resolve the uh, realistic uh, structures of the post media. That means we, 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 simulate, uh, we simulate or model the uh, the transport processes uh, directly using the realistic structures of the pulse media. For example, for fluid flow, uh, at the IV scale, we solve the Dash equation, but at the pulse scale, we solve, we directly solve the Navier uh, Stokes equation uh, uh, by using the, uh, the complicated microscopic structures of the gas diffusion layer. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so the, gen the, the general uh, steps of pulse scale modeling is as follows. So first, we need to obtain the pulse structures uh, of the pulse media by easy by either uh, experiments or a computer reconstruction, uh, uh, and and then based on the realistic structures, we we, we need to develop pulse scale models to 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 simulate 
uh, the uh, the transport process in the policy media, such as single or multi-phase flow heat transfer, mass transport, uh, homogeneous or heterogeneous reaction, or the electron or proton conduction, or the dissolution or precipitation. That means sometimes the solid parts of the process media may be changed to, due to the chemical reaction or due to the melting or solidification. So we need we will also need to tra track the the, the evolution of the solid, solid structures, okay? And then we need to analyze the post-scale results, and, and sometimes we need to upscale the post-scale results to the large scale, so for example, the IV scale simulation. And finally, based on the post-scale results, we need to uh, regulate or, ma or manipul ma manipulate the process inside the process media and to, to improve the structures or the surface availability of the process structures and thus to improve the, uh, the, the process and uh, improve the system performance. So this is the general, uh, uh, these are the general steps of post-scale modeling, okay. <clears throat> and actually during the uh, past, I think uh, from uh, 2007, uh, more than, uh, uh, actually our group are focusing on developing a, a, a post-scale method uh, uh, to try to simulate the complex transport phenomena in process media, okay? So for example, we, we consider the single phase fluid flow or the multi-phase fluid flow, the electrochemical reaction, or the, you, you can see here the gray part is a solid. You can see the solid is dissolved. So that try to track the uh, erosion of the solid structures. And I also try to simulate the, uh, the, 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 the multi-phase flow uh, with chemical reaction and also with the evolutions of the solid structures. So our mod, our method generally is based on the lattice Boltzmann method, a mesoscopic uh, uh, method uh, based on the Boltzmann equation. And uh, for the 2D simulation, we use D, D2 Q, Q9 uh, velocity model. And for the for the 3D, we use D, D3Q19. Okay, and uh, and in such a framework, we 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 contain uh, we we employed. We employed many sub uh, sub models such as the single phase fluid flow model, heat transfer model, or mass transfer model with chemical reaction, or the mass transport uh, or the or interfacial mass transport model, or the multi phase uh, model such as uh, SC multi phase model or the color gradient model, and we also use a develop a volume pixel method for the for track the for tracking the evolution of the solid structure. Okay, so these are the general uh, brief introduction of our post-scale method. And uh, then I try, I want to introduce uh, a, a few examples of our method, uh, 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 applications of our method. So the first one is the application of our method to the uh, transport process in pulse structures in fuel cells. So uh, actually currently the, uh, the study of, uh, the study of, uh, of transport phenomena in, in protein exchange member fuel cell actually is very hot, is a very hot topic. So, uh, so, so the PEM uh, fuel cell is a device uh, that uh, converts uh, chemical energy to electricity. So, in the anode, the hydrogen, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, hydrogen with uh, oxid uh, oxidation reaction takes place, and in the cathode, the oxygen reduction reaction takes place. And the overall reaction is very simple. That is, that is the reaction between oxygen and hydrogen and uh, liquid water is generated. So actually such PEM fuel cell has many advantages such as high efficiency, high high power density, low pollution, room temperature operation, and thus has given much uh, attention. And uh, you can actually in, there are seven components in the PEM fuel cell, including the gas channel, the gas diffusion layer, the micro uh, pulse layer, uh, layer, and the catalyst layer, and the protein exchange, protein exchange member. And you can find that uh, many uh, <clears throat> many components actually inside the PEM fuel cell uh, is pulse media. For example, the catalyst layer with typical pore size of one to 10 nanometer is a pulse media, you can see that. And for the micro MPL, for the micro, uh, uh, ma uh, microscopic uh, pulse layer, uh, it's, uh, it's typical pore size is about 50 nanometer. And you can find it is also a typical a uh, 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 pulse media, and finally the gas diffusion layer with typical pore size of one to one hundred a micrometer, and you can also find it's, that it's a pulse media. 
So you can find that in uh, the pamphlet cell, the post media are widely adopted. And in such, uh, in such complicated structures of the post media, uh, multiple uh, processes uh, uh, simultaneously take place, uh, including the multi-phase flow, heat transfer, mass transfer, uh, phase change, electrochemical reaction, and electro, electron and proton conduction. And you can, so you can find that the structures are very complex. And, in, and the uh, transport of phenomena is also uh, 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 is also very complex. So, uh, so the combined uh, complex structures and uh, uh, and the complicated transport of phenomena or process so pose a great uh, a great uh, uh, challenge for both experiments and the numeric simulations. Okay. So, so uh, particularly for 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 the catalyst layer with typical pole size of only nanometers. So currently it's still very challenging uh, for to perform in situ experiments. So that's why we turn our uh, uh, turn to the post scale model, which can help us to understand the transport of phenomena in pros in these uh, nanoscale scale pulse structures. Okay. So first, let's talk about the uh, transport of post scale model of catalyst layer. So this is a SEM uh, image, and this is a TM image of the catalyst layer. And you can find that actually uh, it's it's a uh, it is it can it consists of packet carbon uh, carbon particles uh, uh, with typical pulse, uh, typical uh, diameter of about forty nanometers, and then on the on the surface of the carbon particle, the PT particle of typical pulse, uh, of typical size of about two to nine five nanometer, are loaded uh, on the the PT particles are all loaded on the carbon surface, and then. A thin uh, ionic film uh, is used to cover on the uh, PTC structure, a uh, platinum and uh, carbon structure uh, surface. So it uh, form a very a uh, 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 a film of thickness of about ten nanometer. So uh, and finally uh, the remaining part that means the uh, here the white part here is actually the pores. So in such complicated complicated structures, uh, so the electron uh, conducts in the carbon and the platinum. The uh, the 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 proton uh, yeah, transports uh, inside the uh, ionic film, and the oxygen transports in the pores and inside the and finally in the same film. And at the PT part, uh, at the surface of the PT particle, uh, the electrochemical reaction takes uh, takes place. So you can find that uh, in order to provide pathways for multiple transport uh, for for the oxygen for the uh, electron and for the proton. So actually, in such catalyst layer, we have multiple constituents and to to solve the multiple multiple functions. So the uh, structures are co very complex, and the transport fee processes are very complex, complicated. Okay. So 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 in our group, during the past ten years, we try to develop a post scale modeling a method to understand such complicated structure uh, uh, process. Okay. So generally, the, the transport process of oxygen uh, inside such uh, catalyst can be described as follows. So oxygen first transport uh, diffuse uh, in the pores between the carbon particles and then arrives at the carbon particle. And it, it dissolves, dissolves into the ionomer and finally arrives at the surface of the platinum and the electrochemical reaction takes place. So particularly at such pore and ionomer interface, the mass transport, the interfacial mass transport uh, is very complex. So I will introduce it later. So why it is very complex, okay? So first we, we in our group, we developed a, a, a in-house uh, a, a structural reconstruction method to reconstruct, to generate the, the 3D realistic, realistic structures of the diff catalyst layer. So this is a, a 3D uh, structure, nanoscale structures we generated, including the carbon particle, uh, the platinum particles and ionic and also pores, and then we we simulate the oxygen diffusion and the proton conduction in such complicated three D structures, and uh, based on the pore scale or nanoscale scale concentration or potential field we obtained, we can predict the effective transport uh, properties such as effective diffusivity or effective uh, conductivity of the structures, and then we we compare our results with the experimental results, and you can find that. The, the agreement is very good. 
And, uh, and, we, and uh, particularly, we, we need to consider the loosened diffusion. That means uh, the pore size is, is very small. So we need to consider, so compared with the collisions between uh, gas particles, the collision between gas particle and the walls are much more frequent. So we need to consider the mechanisms of the loosened diffusion. And uh, you can find that the, uh, so you can find that the effective diffusivity we proposed, we, we predicted, is much lower than the traditional program equation uh, widely used. So that means the transport, pro transport pathway inside the catalyst there is much more complicated. And, and the traditional program equation overestimates the, the, the effective uh, diffusivity of the catalyst layer, OK? And then we further uh, reconstruct the local structures of the catalyst layer, including the uh, carbon particles, the platinum uh, particles loaded on the carbon particle, and the iolomer film. And here in this structure, the platinum loading is 0 0.2 uh, mg uh, per, uh, uh, per centimeters. Okay. And, uh, and now let's let me let, let me uh, let, let me uh, explain in detail the why the local uh, transport process is very is very complex. So you can find that, that after arriving at the uh, pore and iolomer interface, so oxygen first needs to dissolve uh, into the iolomer, uh, 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 and then uh, uh, and then uh, diffuse uh, diffuse inside the same iolomer, and finally finally arrives at the uh, uh, PD uh, surface for electrochemical reaction. So you can find that actually across each interface, the, 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 the change of the oxygen concentration is very complicated. So let's, uh, so why you can, so, so for example, here at the left is the pore surface, is a pore region. And the, at the right is the iolomer region. And the, across the interface, uh, first, the concentration is not continuous. So oxygen transports from across the interface, uh, its concentration will jumps by 40 times uh, according to the Henry, Henry law, okay? And second, the diffusivity inside the pore is much higher than that inside the iolomer. The, you can find that the difference is about uh, 10, uh, 10, 10 uh, 5, uh, X, uh, the uh, orders of magnitude high, uh, higher, right? And finally, actually across this interface, uh, the, the dissolution process is not equilibrium. Actually, the dissolution is, is non-equilibrium. So actually at the interface, uh, there is a local dissolution reaction. And this, the, this uh, dissolution uh, reaction rate is not, inf is not, uh, uh, is not in infinity, okay? It has a, a now it, it, it's very, is, is, is very low, okay? So we need to consider, so you can find that across the four and I iolomer interface or the nothing interface, the interfacial transport process is very complex, okay? So in our group, we develop a post scale model for such uh, interfacial reactive transport process, including the discontinuous concentration and uh, diffusivity and also the local dissolution reaction rate. Okay, so and the same way uh, for a uh, uh, for a very uh, we, we, and then we try to validate our model for de developed. So 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 this is a one D uh, 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 interfacial mass transport process with analytic solution. So you can find that the left part is the pore and the right part is the iolomer. So this is the interface. Okay. So the left side we know the uh, concentration is a higher concentration, and the right side we have a low uh, concentration. So actually for such process. We have an analytical solution for the concentration at the interface. Okay, so if at, at the left side of the interface and the right side of the interface, and then we performed uh, many uh, simulations and try to validate our model. So you can first we consider the diffusivity, the discontinuous uh, diffusivity. Uh, so the so the, the ratio between the diffusivity in the pore and that in the iron is from one to five thousand. And here we, we, we do not consider the, discon uh, the, the discontinuous concentration. And we consider the uh, dissolution reaction as uh, equi equilibrium. So the uh, rate is uh, infinity, okay? And further, we consider the Henry law. That means the diffusivity and also the concentration is not continuous. And finally, we consider, uh, 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 we consider that dissolution rate is not infinity, okay? So you can find that for all these cases, 
uh, the 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 numerical simulation results uh, are in good agreement with the analytical solution. So that means our our model uh, developed for the interfacial mass transport process is a uh, very dated. Okay, and then we applied our model, uh, post scale model, to simulate the complicated uh, uh, reactive transport of oxygen uh, inside the uh, uh, 3D uh, nanoscale structures of the of the of the catalyst layer. So we consider the gas diffusion in the pores. Uh, we consider the loosened diffusion. We consider the uh, the the Henry law, the the interfacial dissolution reaction rate reaction. We consider the oxygen diffusion in the iolmer and the electrochemical reaction at the platinum surface. So so uh, so this is uh, these are the uh, distribution of the of the oxygen field. Okay, and particularly we we predict the 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 the, the, the local transport resistance of the of the of the oxygen. So so uh, so here I want to uh, say a few words about what is the local transport resistance. So so actually uh, the local transport resistance is de defined as follows. So C here is a is a concentration. I limit is actually the maximum current density we can obtain it, and F here is the Faraday constant. So you can you can find that if you want to obtain a higher current density, uh, which is desirable for a fuel cell. We need to reduce the, the local transport resistance, uh, but tr traditionally uh, we use a very uh, high uh, value of the PT loading. So, so the local transport resistance is is low. But as you reduce the platinum loading, because platinum is very expensive, you have to reduce the uh, its loading. So you can find that as we reduce the platinum loading, the local transport resistance is increased. That means the current density will be reduced. So. So, but we do not want to reduce the current density, right? Uh, so, so you can find that we need to, uh, so we need, we need to reduce the local transport resistance. Thus, if we want to, uh, if we reduce the platinum loading, we still can obtain a higher current density. So we need to reduce the uh, local transport resistance, okay? So in our group, we performed a series of post-scale modeling, try to optimize the post scale or the nano scale uh, amount or distributions of the constituents. Uh, so try to uh, reduce the local transport resistance and thus to in, uh, increase, enhance the performance of the pen fuel cell. So first, we want we try to uh, uh, try to resolve the contradiction contradiction between the between the oxygen transport and the triple phase boundary condition. So you can find that if you want to improve the oxygen mass transport. So less ioloma uh, is required because uh, deficiency in of oxygen in ioloma is very low, right? Uh, it's very small. But you, we also need, need more ioloma to to form the chip phase boundary. So you can find that uh, the the ioloma content in the catalyst layer should be optimized. So here we optimize the ioloma content, and uh, you can find that at this point, uh, the uh, with with uh, I. I oversee uh, the the weight ratio between ioloma and the carbon of about 0 0.40 uh, 0 0.4. We can get the lowest transport resistance. Okay, so such uh, post scale modeling results can be helped to for helped for can be help uh, 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 can be helpful for, for the fabrication of the ioloma of the catalyst layer. Okay, and uh, another contradiction is that uh, if we want more reactive size, smaller pore particle size. Uh, is desirable, so we can get higher uh, a specific surface area. But but such small pore uh, particle size or small pore size is not uh, uh, is is not beneficial for the mass transport. Actually, for mass transport, we need need a larger pore size. So we also design a a, a gradient hierarchical pore porosity uh, structure uh, for the catalyst layer, and we find that. By reducing the PD loading of 20%, uh, 26%, we still can uh, get a 20 increase of the current density. So that means the, the cost of the fuel cell is reduced, and still the uh, the performance of the pan fuel can be improved. Okay. So th this work is published in CEJ. Uh, okay. And finally, we we want to uh, investigate the multi-phase flow inside the catalyst layer. So that means we that that means uh, so we perform the multi-phase flow simulation. In catalyst layer, okay. So this is a we 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 develop a post scale model for for consider for considering the the, the condensation. 
uh, condensation uh, uh, of, of, of water vapor inside the catalyst, catalyst, catalyst layer. So you can find this as a liquid water distributions uh, in the catalyst layer on the different relative humidity, okay? So you can find that as the IH increases, the, the amount of liquid water uh, rise uh, and uh, such liquid water will, on the one hand, such liquid water will uh, hinder the oxygen of the transportable oxygen because liquid water liquid water fills the pores, right? So the, the pathway for, for oxygen is blocked. But on the other hand, we find that uh, such liquid water also has Positive uh, also play plays a, a, a positive role. So that means you can find that the platinum only the platinum covered by the ioma can be used for electrochemical reaction. So so partic so the carbon uh, so the platinum inside the pores that that is not covered by the ioma cannot be used. But we our simulation results found that the condensed water can serve as a bridge between the platinum particles and the ioma. So these uh, 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 platinum particles that are covered by liquid water can be used. So that is, that is a water bridge effect. So you can find that uh, by increasing the IH value, so the so more and more particle, platinum, uh, the platinum particles can be uh, used uh, due to the water bridge effect. And the, that's the uh, effective, uh, that's the, 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 the electrochemical surface area can be can be can be can be increased and the, the local transport resistance can be reduced okay so this work is published in in, in applied energy okay and the, and the above work is our ap application of post scale model to the uh, pulse electrons in pan fuel cells so now that uh, i want to talk about a few works of our group about the post scale modeling uh, to carbon dioxide sequestration okay so 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 nowadays people uh, found that it's very important to reduce the carbon dioxide uh, emission that to uh, you know you know the green greenhouse gas effect you know uh, cause the rise of the temperature right so we need to reduce the carbon dioxide emission so one possible uh, strategy is to to uh, uh, or potential or very uh, promising techn technique the te technology is the CCUS right carbon dioxide uh, capture uh, 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 storage and utilization. So, so, so that means we try to store the carbon dioxide in brine, in brine formation, or or in the exploit oil reservoirs. So this is a a, a picture or, or or schematic of the of the carbon dioxide sequestration in brine. So from this uh, uh, from this paper, so you can find that actually uh, for the carbon dioxide uh, sequestration. Uh, in the brine formation, the the processes are very complex. Actually, the multi-phase flow, multi-phase reactive transport process with structural evolution. So you can find it in the pulse media, the capillary chopping. That means the, the 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 carbon dioxide bubbles are trapped in the pulse locks, and it also dissolves into the brine, and it also causes the generation or dissolution of the Minerals. You can find the structures of the blocks are changed due to the due to, due to the chemical reactions. Uh, so uh, sometimes the locks are dissolved, and sometimes the locks, uh, the new minerals are gener generated. So the structures of the post media are changed. So we so so it, it is also very uh, 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 difficult to conduct the in situ experiments. So so we also in our group we developed post scale modern method to try to understand the mechanisms of of capillary trapping or or the solubility trapping or the mineral trapping okay so in our group we uh, developed a following model we develop we, de we developed a multi phase flow model we de de uh, the, the mass transport model and uh, particularly we consider the electro uh, consider the chemical reactions and the evolution of the solid phase due to the uh, chemical reaction that means in here we consider the Dissolution of the locks, so the structures of the locks are changed uh, in our simulation. Okay, so first we we consider we we performed conducted uh, post scale modeling of the capillary trapping mechanism. So you can find here we, we simulate uh, uh, the 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 capillary fingering or the viscous fingering process, uh, the phenomena you know uh, between the in a porous media and for the uh, supercritical CO two and oil uh, two phase flow. And these are the 
a model we use it we used and the initial and boundary conditions. And I want to I and I here I I don't want to go to into details of the applications. I here I just want to show a few examples of our post scale modeling. Okay. And uh, secondly, we also consider the triple phase. Here is only two phase flow, the SCCO2 and oil. And here we also consider the triple phase flow. That means uh, usually the oil reservoir first is uh, is exploited by the by injection liquid water, and uh, and uh, and at the later stage the the, the, uh, the the water content in the reservoir is very high, and uh, it's not efficient to dry the uh, oil using liquid water. Uh, so uh, and and uh, so we also further we inject the uh, gas the uh, supercritical CO two into the reservoir. So you can find that here are the triple phase flow or three phase flow. So the red is the oil, uh, the blue is the uh, water, and the uh, green part is the uh, SCCO2. So here we, we try to dry or the uh, dry, dry the oil uh, oil out of the uh, of the domain, and we still we need to store to uh, to, to 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 increase the storage of the carbon dioxide. Okay, so it's very complicated. Okay. So uh, in our group, we we'll perform such uh, triple phase uh, post-scale fluid flow simulation, and we investigated the effects of vitability and uh, uh, vitability and uh, 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 and then, uh, the capillary number and the or, the or the surface tension force, something like that. And then this uh, uh, works up uh, works are published on uh, uh, POF and uh, uh, international communications in helium mass transport. Okay, and uh, we also performed post scale modeling of the solubility trapping. That means uh, the gas bubble first is dissolved into the brine, forms the aqueous CO2, and then the aqueous CO2 is further uh, uh, decoupled and the following, the, the following two equations or uh, two you know, uh, reaction. Okay, so so this is the dissolution of the of the of the carbon uh, bubble, uh, bubble, and this is the evolution of the uh, concentration of the aqueous CO two. And we also investigated the the the, the relationship between the, uh, the the specific surface area and the saturation uh, 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 the relationship between the specific surface area and the saturation, which is required in the large scale simulation. And we find the exponent relationship for for for, for the first time. So this work is published in Advances in Water Resources. Okay, and finally we also consider the mineral trapping mechanisms. So in here, in this case, the, the 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 solid part will be dissolved. For example, here you can find that the solid particles are dissolved. That means the rocks may be dissolved due to the uh, reactions between the, uh, the carbon dioxide and the brine and the uh, rocks. Okay, so we actually we performed a uh, um. Um, many simulations uh, 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 on the different pick number and the DA number, and uh, uh, in different uh, structures with with different degrees of disorders, and uh, we find different uh, dissolution pattern. For example, patterns for example uniform, hybrid, hybrid, compact, uh, conical, dominant, and ram ram uh, 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 filed uh, 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 dissolution patterns, and we also uh, uh, obtain the following. Uh, dissolution patterns uh, for for uh, on, uh, on the different uh, uh, DA and the packet number. You can see that. And finally, you can find that uh, because of the different flow uh, dissolution patterns, uh, the relationship between the permeability and the porosity is very complex. So it's very difficult to to, to propose a generalized uh, relationship between the porosity and the permeability. So in our group, we further develop a machine learning method. Uh, to predict uh, the to predict the permeability, okay. So this work is also published in POF, and it uh, actually this paper is editor's editor's pick, okay. And finally, we we extend our work to three D uh, simulations. So you can uh, so here is a we 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 constructed a three layers structures of the of of a three D uh, locks, and we also sim uh, simulate or uh, investigate the the dissolution process of the locks on the different pick a number and the DA number. Okay, so I here I, I will not go to details of the 3D simulation. It's okay. So so actually uh, you can find that the, the dissolution patterns are very complicated, right? Okay, finally, uh, uh, we also apply our model to multi-phase flow. Uh, uh, in, in slides above, we only consider the single-phase flow, uh, uh, single-phase 
fluid flow with dissolution. Uh, and, and here we will further consider the multi-phase flow reaction, reactive transport process with the solid dissolution. So here you can find that here is a solid particle. And uh, and uh, and we and we we inject both uh, blue uh, fluid and red fluid into the domain, and uh, there are and the and and uh, and there are uh, species inside the blue part, blue, blue fluid that can dissolve the solid particle. So you can find as an injection injection of the both the blue and the red part, uh, red fluid, the the solid particles are dissolved uh, is dissolved, right? And then this is a concentration of the reactant. And this is the concentration of the product. Okay. So actually, it's it's a very complicated complicated multi phase flow process with chemical reaction and uh, solid dissolution. And uh, we further applied our uh, multi phase flow reactive chance model to a uh, complicated uh, pore structure. So you can here you can find the, the evolutions of the solid particles. Okay. And then the and the evolutions of the reactants and the evolution of the concentration of the of the product, okay, and uh, and this, uh, okay, okay. The, the final application of our method uh, is is about the topology optimization, uh, and uh, uh, actually, uh, you know, uh, as a as a as a scientist and engineering. And we keep asking ourselves, so what is the best structure of a certain process? And so actually there are three kinds of optimization a method. The first one is the size optimization. And the second is the shape optimization. And finally is the topology optimization. And then you can find that actually the topology optimization is of the highest freedom, right? So 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 generally but the basic idea of the top uh, of the top uh, topology optimization uh, is as follows. So we have uh, the state variables, including, for example, for fluid flow and heat transport process, we have velocity, pressure, and temperature, right? And then we have a design variable, for example, J, to indicate uh, so which part should be solid and which part should be fluid in a domain, right? And we have objective function. For example, we need to minimize the pressure drop. We want to maximize the heat transfer coefficient. And we have a constraint uh, functions, for example, for the for the fluid flow and the heat transport problem, we the Navier Stokes equations actually are the constraint equations, right? So in so so in our group, we we develop a, a, a gradient-based optimization method using the Lagrangian function method. So so here J is actually the objective objective function, F is a constraint function, right? And the lambda is actually the Lag Lagrangian multiple. And then you can find the, the derived uh, of the uh, the Lag Lagrangian function over lambda over phi and over the design variable, actually we obtain the fold solution or joint solution and the sensitivity. So by solving the fold solution, the joint solution, uh, the fold uh, equations, the joint equations, and uh, by uh, finally by obtaining the sensitivity of the, uh, set, uh, we can update uh, the the structures. Uh, or, or the structures and then to improve or to enhance uh, the heat and mass transfer process and design and thus we can obtain the desirable structures okay so in our group we also develop such a joint let's both method for topology optimization particularly we couple this method with the level set method for updating the structures so this is the forward simulation uh, and this is a Lagrangian multiple uh, equations and this is a joint uh, simulation. So actually, the solution, the, the 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 solution of the joint simulation uh, equation is quite close to the forward uh, equation. Okay, and this is the uh, uh, the sensitivity calculation, and we use the level set method to update the structure. Okay, and here I want to show you a few examples of our method for optimizing the structures. For example, uh, for a domain, square domain, a uh, uh, water flows into the domain from the from the top left and flows out of the domain from the right bottom. And we need to uh, minimize the pressure drop. Uh, 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 and, uh, and in this domain, the, the, the volume of the fluid should be smaller than uh, 0 0.4. So here you can find the, the, the optimized structure we obtained. So the red part 
actually is the is the, is the channel we obtained it. Okay. So 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 uh, by such design, the pressure drop can be op can be minimized. Okay. So we, we also investigated the effects of the initial distributions uh, of the initial the, the initial structures, and you can find that we obtain the quite similar results. That means the initial effects of the initial structures can be uh, can be uh, can be neglected. Okay. And we also applied our joint method to for heat conduction problem uh, related to thermal clock. So we design design such uh, very complex, really interesting uh, structures which can which can uh, uh, which can considered as a thermal clock. And uh, you can find that that means by uh, place uh, this circle inside the domain, the, uh, the temperature. If we observe the temperature from outside, the temperature field is is exactly the same as as a pure, uh, as a conductor connection in a pure uh, material. Okay, so you can find that the temperature here is the same as as this and as 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 this picture. Okay, this picture actually is a pure material. For, that means the some conductivity in the entire domain is the same. Okay, so the temperature decreases linearly from the left to the right. So you can here you find the, the thermal clock design, the temperature distribution at the bottom and at the top is the same as this one. Okay. And we also apply our, our, our joint net mode method for net for nature convection problem. So this is the structures we obtained it, uh, we obtained it uh, from uh, on the different ratio of number. Okay, so so we also uh, perform 3D uh, simulation validation, and we find that the structures we obtained indeed uh, performs better than traditional structures. Okay, and we also applied our method for convective heat transport problem. So for 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 um, uh, uh, and here actually are the structures we designed uh, for for minimizing for minimizing the temperature of the domain. Okay, and uh, finally I want to uh, actually uh, currently we still we are still in our group we are we are, we are working on developing three D three um, uh, D uh, 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 top large optimizer method. Okay, uh, here these examples actually are two D. And in our group, uh, we are developing 3D uh, 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 topology uh, based on the lattice model method. Okay. So now I want to. I think I I I I have to make uh, a conclusion of my uh, talk today. So uh, so actually, uh, in our group, uh, we developed a, a post scale model based on the lattice model method for coupled multi-phase flow heat and mass transfer, chemical reaction, and solid structure evolution, and uh, we also apply our uh, this post-go method to transport processes in process media with a background of fuel cell, carbon dioxide storage, or topology optimization. And uh, you can find that the such post-go modeling can 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 provide uh, much uh, deep understanding or underlying uh, understanding of the interactions between structures and the transport processes. And in the future, actually, uh, our group are focusing are working on uh, 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 flow boiling uh, with material collusion and a, and a three phase heat transport process. For example, the vapor, uh, water, ice uh, uh, processes. We are trying to develop post scale model for such much more compli com complicated structures. Okay. And uh, finally, I want I want to thank my uh, supervisors and my uh, colleagues for their cooperation, and I also want to thank my PhD and master students for for their uh, for your hard working. And uh, I also want to thank the fun funding support from the National Science Foundation of China and the National uh, Key Research and Development Program. And uh, and also I want to thank very thanks, uh, uh, thanks very much for your attention for about uh, 50 minutes. Okay, so Professor Li, uh, that's all my talk today. Yes, yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Chen. Very, uh... A lot of different application and uh, very interesting uh, topic and applications. So now we uh, go go to the Q and A uh, time. So if we have uh, audience, you have question, want to uh, ask Dr. Chen, you can unmute yourself and ask ask Dr. Chen directly. Uh, hello. Uh, can I ask a question? Okay. Sure. 
Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, first of all, so much for this wonderful talk. Uh, my name is Hang. I'm from Peking University. Um, so uh, I have kind of uh, two quick questions. One is about uh, the, the multi-phase simulations that you showed. Um, I'm not personally doing LBM uh, simulations, but my understanding is that for LBM simulations of multi-phase um, flow, it has certain uh, limitations regarding the density contrast or the density ratio and yes. the viscosity ratio for the yes. two fluids. So how, how do you handle that when you have like supercritical CO2 versus oil or even waste water? Okay. So this is your first question, right? Yes. Uh, but, do you want me to go? Okay. So, okay. I, I first, I want, uh, let me ask, uh, answer your first question. So actually, uh, so you are right. So currently we have limitations for the, you know, for the LB simulations regarding the density ratio. And actually, uh, when, uh, in, uh, for the background, I sim I start, I start, uh, I study for the, you know, supercritical CO2 and the oil and the water. Actually, the density ratio is not very huge. So, you know, the density of the supercritical CO2 is about, uh, uh 700, right? And mm -hmm. liquid water is one one thousand, and oil is about uh, nine or eight hundred. So the density ratio is not very huge. So it's about unity, right? So we mm -hmm. do not need to consider the you know the, so so and for the viscosity ratio. So currently our model, for example, the superpotential model can can model viscosity viscosity ratio as high as 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 one thousand. So that's 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 enough. I sufficient, I think, for the simulation. Of the supercritical for the triple phase flow, including supercritical CO two, oil and water. Okay, Thanks. okay, yeah. Okay. So just uh, just to follow up, uh, does that mean uh, like is there like a typical range for the density ratio that the code can handle? Meaning, uh, if we are working with, for example, air water system, will that be an issue or just uh, yes for air water, water system that is an issue? You know, because okay. the density ratio is about one thousand. Right, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but in my simulation about the uh, multi-phase flow in the nanoscale uh, uh, structures, for example, in the catalyst layer I just talked about, uh, mm -hmm. because in such a nanoscale uh, uh, structures, uh, the dominant force actually is the surface tension force. That means the gravity uh, gravity force, uh, the effect of the gra gravity gravity force is small. So in mm -hmm. that case. We do not need to need to consider the density ratio. That means if you uh, can simulate a case with density ratio as one thousand, and another with 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 unit, uh, in such nanoscale scale structures, actually the 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 the, the, the flow pattern is the same, the capillary fingering is the same. Okay, that means so we do not need to consider the density ratio. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Okay, yeah. So my second question is about uh, the the code, which is very powerful, as you showed. Uh, I was wondering how about the compute co computational uh, cost and performance, because you are going to very small pores and also yes. the domains. Yes, actually, the computational resources uh, required is very huge. <laughs> so actually, we use our code is paralyzed by MPI. Okay. And usually, we use more than about sometimes 100, sometimes 1,000, more than 1,000 calls to perform such uh, CPU calls to perform such uh, post-scale simulation. Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, usually we use high performance computer cluster to, to, to perform our post-scale simulation. More than uh, 100 or sometimes uh, more than 1,000 uh, uh, CPU calls, okay. So what's the size of the degree of freedom uh, the, for your typical system? Being uh, what, or... uh, what, what do you mean, uh, pardon me? The, the, the grid size, how, what's the- uh, Grid size, uh, usually for 3D, I, uh, for 3D about uh, 200, 200, 200. So that, that, that is what, let me, uh, uh, 200, uh, two, two, 200 in each direction, uh, 3D, that, let, let mean how many, how, totally how many, uh, let me, let me calculate. 10 million. <laughs> yeah, two, 200 in each direction. So. Yeah, it's about 10 million. 10 million, okay. 
And uh, for Udi simulation, usually, you know, sometimes 4,000, if 4,000 multiplied 4,000, okay. Yeah, the similar size, 10 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any other questions? Oh, I, I think I may, I, I just now confused. So it just now is Professor Deng Hang from Peking University asked a question, yeah. right? Yes. Okay, yes. I see. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, actually we, 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 we have friends in the, in the WeChat, right? Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, oh, okay, good. Hmm. Oh, hello. Hi, Professor Chen. This is Zhang Yan from the University at Buffalo. Okay. <laughs> It was very nice to uh, listen to your talk this morning. And in fact, I also graduated from Xi'an Jiaotong University. <laughs> really? <laughs> Good. Okay. From Aerospace Engineering Department with Professor uh, Ji Jun Wang. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <why laughs> right, so <laughs> it's very nice to uh, meet you here. Uh. So uh, so first, uh, uh, thank you very much for giving this very interesting to uh, uh, talk. Uh, so I, I just have two more questions, um, um, which kind of similar to our first, uh, uh, the, the question from the first audience. So my mm -hmm. first question, about still about the uh, latest Boltzmann measure. So based on mm -hmm. my understanding, the LBM is more like uh, a mesh based uh, uh, the um, yes. simulation mesh, right? Yes. And, yes. Uh, if, uh, so uh, again, so for example, for your poor simulation, you have very complex a uh, poor network. So in order to uh, characterize or identify the poor network, then I'm just uh, wondering how when you do the meshing. So you have to uh, uh, use a very sophisticated uh, like a technique to mesh your uh, domain smartly so that you can handle the poor network uh, accurately. Uh, is that understanding correct? Yeah, I, 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 I actually, uh, you know, in, uh, sometimes, you know, people, you know, use, you, you know, use uh, for example, uh, in a post media, sometimes uh, in, in a local regime, the pore size is very small, and in another regime, the pore size is very huge. So sometimes, if you use a uniform uh, meshes, uh, I think that is not necessary, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And sometimes people use different meshes in different local regimes. So, so, oh. so in in that case, uh, we have to develop a hierarchy. That is both a method, and uh, and currently in my group, I I just use a uniform mesh size in the entire domain. Okay, and uh, sometimes we we perform the uh, group, uh the, the mesh uh, independence check, uh, try to make sure the the, the green number is, is sufficient. Okay, so that's why sometimes you know if for such simulations, the uh, computational resource is very huge. If you okay. want to resolve the the structures, <clears throat> right? Uh. I see. Then um. I'm just wondering, so if you uh, just have a fix, like a grid uh, in your simulation, so when uh, your, um, uh, so for example, for your another case, the um, uh, uh, the dissolve of the solid part, then when the solid part, the domain is shrinking, then how you can uh, modify the, uh, say the material property associated with uh, each like a uh, node or, uh, uh, each point in your grid. Yeah, so. yes. Yeah, so actually in our simulation, if you, you know, if a solid node is changed to a fluid, fluid node due to the dissolution, and mm -hmm. we need to initialize the uh, fluid information in that node and using okay. using surrounding nodes, okay. And mm -hmm. uh, another case is for precipitation. That means a new, uh, a fluid node is changed to a solid node. That means the solid solid part is is growing. So in that case, mm -hmm. we need to assign the you know the, the fluid node that will be changed to solid node. We assign the information in this fluid node to to the surrounding fluid nodes. Okay, I see. I see. Your point. In that case, we try to make sure the conservation of of mass momentum uh, 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 in in the system. Mm -hmm. So basically, you have some kind of like uh, an indicator. If, which can tell if that node is solid or fluid. Yes, yeah. If the node is solid or fluid, or 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 the statue 
maybe uh, the statue of this node, maybe it will in the, in the next time step, it will change it to solid node. Well, uh, I, uh, yes. I see. Okay. Uh, and also uh, about the poor scale simulation, that's my second question. So uh, you are handling the very complex, like a uh, supercritical carbon dioxide together with the oil particle, uh, oil uh, fluid, and also the water. So uh, during the very uh, complex like uh, simulation, do you also consider the the thermal dynamics of each like uh, a fluid? So, for example, uh, for the like a super super critical like a carbon dioxide. So during the fluid flow, so the temperature is varying and temper uh, the pressure is also uh, varying. So with that, uh, the density might be also yeah. changed. So I, I'm just uh, wondering if that part is also considered in the. Actually, uh, besides uh, in our group, we I have a code for uh, for modeling for post scale modeling of boiling condensation. Uh, that is another story with background of uh, of, of nuclear reactor. Uh, mm -hmm. The sub, uh, but in in the examples I showed today, uh, all of them are isomer. That means the temperature is not considered. Okay. Okay, that's the isothermal process. Okay? Yes. Yes. We have and another uh, post scale model for, as, as I just mentioned, for for flow for boiling, and in that case, we need to consider the the change of the temperature. Yes. Okay. okay. I see. So it seems your solver is very powerful to handle the complex uh, process. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you so much for the uh, further information. Thank you. And thank you. Okay, so uh, uh, by the way, uh, Jiao Yan is or, also our uh, organizer of this uh, and CFM SM uh, seminar series. Yeah, I, I see that it's a very big group, right? Yes, yeah. from yeah, different so, universities. Yes. Yeah, so we also have our LBM uh, expert, Xu uh, Huimong. Uh, yes. He may also have some question. <laughs> yeah, hi, Professor Chen. This is Xu yes. Huimong. Yeah. Uh, so I have a question about uh, uh, one of your models in which you uh, mentioned you included the Lawson effect in your model. Uh, could you tell me more details on that? Because uh, to include uh, to include the Lawson effect uh, in for the for the flows uh, with the very complex uh, boundaries is a very uh, difficult topic. So yes. So actually. Uh... I know that is people in the framework, uh, uh, in the community of LB, you know, tries to uh, develop the, for example, the uh, sleep LB model, right? Uh, for 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 modeling such a sleep as a sleep flow, or, or for example, develops models or or modify the boundary conditions, right? And yeah. uh, here, you know, uh, I use this equation to to consider the loosened diffusion. So here, the here actually here is the diffusivity of the oxygen. So uh, uh, so in large pores we only consider the bulk diffusivity, but in smaller pores we need to consider the loosened diffusion diffusivity. The loosened diffusivity is calculated as this, is calculated by this equation, and uh, uh, and the only uh, here you need to determine the pore size of each pores in my pore in the pore scale structures I was trying to, I generated. So so. So, so here, I, 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 in, in my group, I developed a scheme to determine the pore size of each of each void of each void node or pore node of DP. So, so, so then I can calculate the, the local loosened diffusivity uh, of each node, and then I can calculate the D of each node, and finally I can simulate the oxygen diffusion by uh, with the with with, with the loosened diffusion considered. Okay, I do not. Uh, uh, I do not try. Uh, I, in my group, I do. I do not need to, or I do not try to directly uh, uh, develop a pole scale or, or a LP model that directly uh, consider the slip slippage at the boundary. Okay. Uh, 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 Professor Mo, can can. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I'm. I'm not sure if I. Explain, correct, uh, you know, uh, clearly. Yeah, I see, I see, I see your point. Yeah, okay. my collection is not very good, so it's uh, in a slow. Okay. Okay. So, any other question from our audience?
Okay, if not, maybe I can I can take this uh, advantage to ask my question. <laughs> so, so um, I, uh, Dr. Chen, in, in your simulation, you also consider some um, another particle transport in the in the flow field, and uh, also you consider some the another particle transport in the in the uh, ion field. I'm not sure how, how you can resolve the particle-particle interaction because this is very challenging uh, in, in our simulation. Um, even, even we just consider the nanoparticle in some confined uh, space, there's new breakation force that uh, affect yeah. the particle-particle interaction. And then when you consider the electro field, the electro uh, static interaction will be makes this interaction more complicated. I'm not sure. Uh, in your model, how you handle that? The, because you also use discrete particle, um, track the discrete particle transport. I'm not sure how, how you consider the particle-particle interaction. Uh, sorry, I, I think I, 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 made some, uh, I make some confusion here because in my code, I did not consider the, uh, uh, the, the fluid solid particle uh, tracking uh, or, or the mo or motion of the uh, particles, okay? Uh, okay. so here, maybe I, I made some confusion here because here, I think you are talking about this picture, right? Uh, uh, no, you have you, you have some um, um, uh, particles. The particles are not moving. Uh, the particles are not moving. That's static. For example, the particles here. Okay, I, I, I remember you have some solid particle concent concentration uh, process. You you have some. Um, and um, nanopore, and you have particle just um, diffuse into the nanopore and the con uh, con So which part? Oh, I see. I see this, this one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. This one is a schematic from for, 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 from Vicky, not my result. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, it's just a schematic of the uh, of the con uh, capillary condensation. See that? So this actually this particle actually is the uh, is a part is a uh, is a vapor molecules, so it 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 condense on the on the surface. Yeah. Okay. So this is not my my simulation is out. It's from Wiki. <laughs> okay. 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 So 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 you you actually do not explicitly uh, consider the the nanoparticle to you don't resolve the nanoparticle, right? Yes. Yes. I I I don't resolve that one. The motion of that one of the nanoparticles. Huh. It's okay. another story. You know the. The amount for, for the liquid, uh, uh, for the fluid solid, uh, multi phase flow, right? It's another yeah. story. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so the, the my last question is uh, about the when when you use the pore scale model to do the ups, upscaling, you usually use the effective diffusion um, parameters, uh, effective permeability of the material. I'm wondering, do you consider because the at the nano scale, the pore pore structure is very different. If you do upscaling, do you consider the variance? Because here you only yes. consider constant. Yes, I, I actually. Could... Uh, yeah. uh, go ahead. Yeah, uh. if you do upscaling, I think that the parameter, for example, the diffusion coefficient, maybe a distribution, is not a constant. I'm I'm not yes, sure if yes. you consider that. Yes, yes, you, yes. You are right. You guys are exactly right. So that's why you know. Actually, the node here, actually for each node here, we perform, we actually construct more than 20 structures. And it's actually here, it's of average value of, and okay. as you mentioned just now, the structures, the narrow scale structures, you know, they are randomness, right? So, yes. so, so we generate, usually for each case, we generate more than 20 structures and we obtain the average value, okay. And I and, and I think you are right. Should I should sometimes I feel I maybe it's better for me to add an error bar here, right? Yeah, it, it's it's not just the uh, uh, the measurement yes. use error bar. I, I mean, if you do upscaling in the larger scale model, you use the d effective. I'm not sure if we should use a distribution instead of using a constant. Uh, yes, actually, it's a relationship. It's a it's a distribution, not a constant. Yeah. Here, for example, the Effective distributivity uh, varies is a, is a function of the porosity, right? So, yes. so it's a relationship, not a constant. Yes. 
I think it's uh, referring to uh, make the effect uh, effect uh, effective uh, uh, efficient coefficient as a function of uh, of space. Of what? As a function oh. of space. Yes. Not just a uh, property. Uh, 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 I mean, if you know for the pulse media, if if in the different, for example, in different parts, the process is different. Uh, uh, all the structure is different. You can, for example, for the catalyst layer in the chemistry cell, actually, uh, we think uh, the uh, uh, if the structure is gradient, okay, so so that means different parts have different diffusivity. We we will vary it with with you know uh, as we mentioned just now. But if it, if it is a homogeneous structures, we only we do not need, we do not need to vary uh, uh, or use different effective diffusivity, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so this, this is another dimension if you want to consider or not. Yes. Because if you, you consider the heterogeneity of the, um, the nano structure, maybe yes. the, the mean value is not, uh, it, it's, it, it's not the only thing you need, you need to consider. Yes. The mean value does not represent the, the, for example, you have the same porosity. But the structure is different. You will get some yes. different. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And uh, this picture, you know, you see here. This picture actually shows the the case you just the the, the, the situation you just talked about. You can find that because of the different structures, you can find that under the same process, the permeability is not is not the same. It's different. See that? Yes. 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 Exactly. Okay, thank you, Dr. Chen. Thank you. Thank you for your invitation. I thank uh, Professor Li and Professor Mo. <laughs> okay, so so uh, if uh, we have audience, you have uh, other question, you can contact uh, Dr. Chen offline. Okay, so based on the time, it's very late in China. So we will end the seminar um, today. And thank you very much. And okay.